Hello, thank you for joining us as today we're going to stand up an Avanti CSA or Cloud Service Appliance in our Azure environment. The first thing that we need to do is to download our OVA. Uh, I'll put the link in the description uh, so that you can download the most current OVA. Once we have that OVA downloaded, it is important for us to use a tool like VirtualBox to go ahead and import that OVA, make some general configuration changes to it, and then save it out before we convert it to a VHD. So from the VirtualBox menu, I'm going to go ahead and choose to import the appliance that we've downloaded, select the OVA and open it, and click Next. It will give us some information about the settings on this particular OVA. To leave those as default would be fine for our exercise. After one minute or so, the OVA will import. And before we begin to make our configuration changes, uh, particularly in Windows 10, we'll need to change one setting under our system tab here to not emulate the PS2, but to emulate a USB tablet. That will help our mouse control. Now we can go ahead and start up this VM. Bring that over, and we'll give that uh, a minute or two to start up. Uh, once we uh, start up that VM, the configuration changes that we'll want to make are to our uh, security tab and to our system tab, and I'll walk you through that in just a moment. Um, once we've made those changes, we'll shut down the VM and we'll export it so that we can have a uh, a VMDK that will then convert to a VHD. So this should just take a, a moment to boot up and, and once it's done we'll go ahead and log in at that GUI with the, the default admin and admin username and password and we'll get started once it reaches that point. Okay, looks like we're here. We'll go ahead and type that in first thing that we'll want to do is scroll down and accept our EULA. It will prompt us to change the default password. Go ahead and put in something here that you'll remember. It does have a complexity requirement, so be able, uh, be sure to use a strong password. Uh, then we're going to go to our security tab here. We're going to uh, scroll down here just a little bit, and we're going to check the box to allow access to HTTP HTTPS and SSH and we'll click Save and we should get a confirmation that that has been saved successfully. There's the confirmation. Next we're going to go to our System tab and then also to Network Settings within the main pane. We need to go ahead and delete the default entry there at the top. We can leave ETH1 blank as that will be populated in Azure by our virtual network. Uh, if you'd like to add DNS at this point, you can. Well, again, we're going to remove the default one. Um, you can add it here or we can add it later uh, as we can do some additional configuration once we're in Azure. I'll add it here just for fun. You can change your domain if you need to and the host name. I will leave it at default just for now. And we'll give that a second to uh, take that configuration and save it. Once it's been saved, we'll go ahead and log out. And we can go ahead and shut down and power off that VM. Next from our menu, we're going to go ahead and export this appliance. Uh, we'll give it uh, a place where it can go. We're going to pick our same folder so that we can work with it and give it a name. looks good. Click Next and the defaults again are fine for this setting. Once that's done we can close out of VirtualBox. We'll notice that we now have a new OVA that we created. We'll go ahead and open that with a tool like 7-Zip or WinZip or whatever your favorite uh, archive tool is.
we're looking specifically for the VMDK and that's all we need at this point. So we can go ahead and extract that VMDK again to our same location is fine. We close that window and now notice that we have easy access to our VMDK. Uh, that will be important for the next step here. So from uh, an administrator command prompt, we can navigate to our VBox Manage, which is located in Program Files, Oracle, and VirtualBox. Here we can see we have a VBox Manage EXE, which we'll use to do our final step uh, um, in conversion. There it is. Sorry about that. All right, so the next step then is to put in this command with a VBox so that we can convert our virtual disk, our VMDK, to the VHD format. So what that looks like is the VBox Manage Executable with the clone HD argument being passed and then our format switch and then the type of format that we'd like to use. So in this case it is our CSA VMDK which is this guy here need to change that real quick to match and then what we're gonna uh, the path to the VHD that we'll create so if everything looks good in our command we hit enter and shortly it should start to count down in terms of percentages, or excuse me, count up here in terms of percentages. And there it goes. So after just a few seconds, it looks like we'll have a complete process. We're done. All right, let's validate that we have a new VHD file. There it is. So now we're uh, ready to begin our next step of uploading this VHD to our Azure storage blob. Okay, let's continue on by uploading our VHD to Azure. We're going to do this by creating a couple of variables. The first one is going to be our resource group name. Go ahead and enter that in there. Then we're going to give it a source VHD. And we're going to put in the path to where we created that VHD. And then last is going to be our destination VHD. And we're going to find this by going to our Azure account and looking for the link uh, for our blob. Let me show you how to get that done. Okay, so we'll sign into our Azure portal. I like to just go to all resources, pick our storage, and then we're going to look at blobs and in our particular blob uh, whoops let's go back one we should be able to get the URL here from the properties of that particular blob and we can just copy that in and uh, that will um, be okay for uh, putting into our script Alright, so we have our destination VHD description in there, then let's go ahead and time to upload. And then we're going to use um, a command to add Azure VHD. That looks like this, add Azure Remote VHD. We've already passed our variables. Uh, we're going to specify the number of threads to use in our upload. 
and we can hit enter. We've done that correctly. We should see that it will begin to create uh, an MD hash for checksumming. Uh, and then once it's done with that, uh, it will begin to upload. And through the magic of recording, we'll go ahead and speed that up. Okay, it looks like it's complete. Let's verify that by bringing in our browser again. We'll go into our container, and there is the VHD that we have uploaded. Perfect. Next, we're going to use PowerShell to create the VM with the resources that we've uploaded. Okay, let's continue on by uh, declaring a few more variables in order to put all together um, the disk that we've uploaded and to have it be connected to our VM. We're going to start by naming a virtual network. And a location. Put those together. Tells us that our get Azure RM virtual network is being deprecated, but that's okay for now. Add in those pieces for the public IP. Configure the size. Configure the destination VHD and attach it as Linux. Attach the other interface IDs that we have. and then tie it all together, creating that with all of the variables that we've put together. Okay, looks like that's all done. Now let's log back into the portal and we should see all of our new resources created. And there they are, the CSA network interface, the public IP, our test VNet, and our VM. So the next step then is to go ahead and make sure that in our security group that we've allowed access uh, to our VM. Looks like we have, which is good. Uh, and then we can go ahead and start up the VM. Oh, it is already started, which is good. Okay, one more thing that we need to do is we need to go into our network interface that we created. When we select it, we need to go to our network security group. We need to click on the pencil and we need to add in our CSA security group that uh, allows access to this machine. Uh, once that's done and we click save, uh, then we should be able to note the IP here. Copy that. Let's take a look at the serial console to see if we see our screen. Looks like it has booted. We can check our public IP. So back on the uh, serial console, let's go ahead and get logged in. And this should be with the password that you created uh, when we logged in and accepted the EULA. Okay, it looks like we're in. So uh, we need to uh, set up the IP address now. So we're going to navigate to our etc sysconfig network scripts. And let's create a file. Well, let's sudo to create that file.
And it's there. Now let's edit that. And put some information in it. That looks good for the information that we want in there. We'll make sure that the information is in there. And it is. Now we'll just want to restart the, net, the network service. We can do that with a sudo service network restart. Let's just see if we can't ping out. looks like we can. So at this point I think we're okay to log out. And remember that we copied the IP information from our clipboard. Open a new tab, paste in our IP and go, and then click to log into the service appliance. We will log in with the same admin, username, and password that we set up previously, and we're in. Now we'll need to go through and uh, accept our uh, activation. Uh, we can manage the core identities. We can add or do things with the system uh, or firewalls or anything else that we'd like to. And that is how you stand up a CSA in Azure. Thank you for watching.